Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. Today's discussion is in the Apologetics to the Jehovah Witness playlist of this YouTube channel and is entitled, God is Your Throne Forever. Before we begin a short prayer, a blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I pray to the triune God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so I am empowered to speak truth without error and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God, any errors are my own. I also pray that you, the listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit so that any truth I speak or any scripture that I interpret correctly is welcomed into your heart, your mind, and your soul. Now let us begin the discussion. First off, I want to go over an important biblical principle that in the Bible, different people can share the same name. Let's look at Genesis 5.2 and compare it to Genesis 4.1. Male and female created he, referring to Jehovah, them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. There is the Hebrew of Genesis 5.2 on the left, 4.1 on the right. You see down here on the left, Adam, man, and up there on the right, Wehadam and Adam. Second point, in the Bible, God wanted the first two persons to join and make one being. Where do I get this from? Genesis 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man, one person, leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, a second person, and they shall be one flesh or one being. Questions. Is Eve along with her husband called Adam in Genesis 5-2? Yes. Is Eve the same person as Adam, her husband? Of course not. So in the Bible, can two or more people share the same name? Yes. So the very first two people mentioned in the Bible share the same name? Yes. Do you think this has any important spiritual significance? Maybe. To this day, is it typical for husbands and wives to share the name, same name? Yes, yeah, usually their surname. Obviously, it's getting less typical as time goes on. In Genesis 2.24, does Jehovah state his desire that two separate persons, a husband and a wife, join to become one flesh being? Yes. Do you think this has any important spiritual significance? Again, maybe. Prior to Adam and Eve, prior to creation, did anyone have a name? Yes, the father and the son. To this day, is it typical for father and son to share the same name? Yes, almost always their surname and sometimes also their first name. For example, I share my first name and my surname with my father. Considering all this, is it theoretically possible for Jesus to share the name of Jehovah with his father even though Jesus is not the same person as his father? Maybe. Also, is it theoretically possible for Jesus, one person, and his father, a second person, to be somehow joined into one unique, eternal, divine, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent spirit being Almighty God? Maybe. Now let's get into the discussion. All of this is from JW.org, New World Translation. Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. God is your throne forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You loved righteousness and you hated wickedness. That is why God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of exaltation more than your companions. Question, in the Old Testament, who has a throne that is forever and ever? Jehovah God. In the Old Testament, who has a scepter of righteousness? Jehovah God. So, is it talking about Jehovah in both verses? Psalm 45, 6 and 7? Well, yeah, God. Appears so. But why then, in verse 7, does it call Jehovah God, but then state that he has a God and also companions? This is strange. Let's compare that to the New Testament, Hebrews 1, verses 8 and 9. But about the Son, he, referring to the Father, says, God is your throne forever and ever, and the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of uprightness. You love righteousness and you hated lawlessness. That is why God, your God, anointed you with the oil of exaltation more than your companions. Question in the New Testament, who has a throne that is forever and ever? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the New Testament, who has a scepter of righteousness? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Why does the Father call the Son God in verse 8? Strange. How does the Watchtower explain the seeming contradictions and paradoxes? Ask them. Final prayer. Eternal Father, God Almighty, it is you who I worship and you who I call out to now. I know that you are who you are and not necessarily who I believe you to be or who I've been taught by men that you are. I believe in your holy scriptures and know that they contain no lies, no contradictions, and no paradoxes. I pray for you to use your Holy Spirit to bless me with the truth regarding Jesus Christ.
if he indeed, along with you as father, is rightly to be referred to as Jehovah, the one whose throne is forever and ever, please reveal this to me. If I have been deceived, please remove the evil spirit causing this from me. I humbly ask this in your divine name, for you are holy and blessed from ages to ages. Amen. I pray I spoke truth and interpreted Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If it was a blessing to you, I would greatly appreciate it. If you could like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, Lord willing, we will meet again. May the Holy Trinity bless us all.